Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 14.7 RC or Release Candidate as well as iOS 15 Beta 3 were released this week. And so I wanted to go over the overall experience, my experience, your experience based off the YouTube community poll, a few new features and more. And before we get started, everything I've mentioned is going to be in the description below in different sections if you'd like to check that out and jump to a different section that matters most to you. Also, if you want to discuss this further, there's Discord and Telegram servers as well. I'll link those in the description. Now, the first thing is a new feature. And if we go into settings and then we go down to privacy, under privacy, scroll down and you'll see microphone. Under microphone, it's now orange instead of red. So they've just made a slight change to the overall design. It's orange instead of red, and it's a little bit different. Now, another thing they've changed is maybe you want to make a backup so that you can move to a new phone. Maybe you transfer to a new phone. I showed that in settings where you would go to general, and then you can go down to transfer or reset iPhone. When you get this ready, it actually gives you a countdown of 21 days. And thanks to Inez for sending this in, you'll see it says ready for your new iPhone. And it says your data is ready to be moved to your new iPhone, this iCloud backup will be deleted in 20 days. Now this happens if you don't have enough storage available in iCloud, you're not paying for that storage, it will now give you the option to back it up for 20 days. It did say 21 days before, so that's a nice little feature they have. Also, one thing I noticed is when you go into your messages and you go to save a photo, there's a slightly new animation. So if you go into your messages, now in messages, if you tap on the download arrow next to a photo, tap on it, it will ask you to save the photo. Save it once, and then if you scroll down and tap on the next one, it will save it automatically, and there's a nice little animation, and it disappears. So that's something new in Beta 3 that I noticed. It could have been there in Beta 2, but I don't remember seeing that animation. So let me know if you have that already. Now, as far as the overall experience, we'll talk about iOS 14.7 in a moment, but the overall experience of iOS 15 Beta 3 has been pretty good over the past few days for me. I'm using it full time on my 12 Pro Max. I also have it on the iPhone 11 here, and it's been pretty stable. The good thing is I haven't had any lag really or any respring's, anything like that. Scrolling has been great. It doesn't mean it's perfect. There are a few issues here and there, but that part has been fixed. Many people are happy with the redesign of Safari. So if you go into Safari and we'll go to Apple, for example, under Apple, the redesign with the bar at the bottom, a lot of people are happy that they've kept it this way or made it this way. And it's great to see them sort of refine it and listen to their audience or their users where we were complaining that this would slide up to the top before. So that's been fixed in this update. Also, people are saying that CarPlay seems to be working better and having less is issues with messages. So that's a great thing. And also people using Siri with home are saying that it's better as well. So quite a few people were having issues with Siri when you initiate maybe turning off lights or changing different things using the Siri prompts. It wasn't working as well, now it is. So that's a great sign. Although there are still some issues some people are saying. I've seen quite a few people say that Spotlight Search is not working. So if you pull down from the middle, maybe search for Apple, and people were saying it's not working. Now this could be due to it indexing in the background, trying to figure out where all the files are and then sort of doing the search afterwards. Give it a few days if you haven't already and see if that works for you. Usually it will. I had a few people complain to me at the beginning where it wouldn't work. Now it seems to be working. One thing I noticed up until this morning is I had a notification badge on the phone app and for some reason it wouldn't go away. When I woke up this morning, it was gone, but it was there for it seems like hours and hours, and that's true of FaceTime as well. So quite a few people have said the same thing where the notification badge, badge just wouldn't go away. So that's something that was still a problem for quite a few people. And also some people are still saying that the music bug is there. So when you play music, it would stop after 15 minutes or 15 seconds or so and just not work properly. But this is working fine for me. They did fix that in iOS 14.7. Also, AirPlay seems to finally be working. I can send images between my iPhone and the other iPhones, like this wallpaper, for example. I sent it to the different iPhones and it worked just fine, where before it just would hang and not work properly. I'd have to actually send it from a different device. Bluetooth definitely seems better. So if you're using Bluetooth with your AirPods, quite a few people had issues with that before where they would disconnect. It seems like it's working much, much better now. However, there are still some issues, and one of those is if you're using a VPN, it's crashing for quite a few people. So if you have a VPN set up, 
it's just not working or it won't open or the app crashes or you just can't initiate the VPN to begin with. So that does happen. And also some apps are crashing like Twitter over and over. Now, usually this needs to be updated with a software update. They'll fix their app and then it will fix the issue. Also, many banking apps are not working as well. So just keep that in mind if you're going to beta three. Now, also quite a few people report that performance is much better on older iPhones. I had someone comment that iPhone seven is working great with this update. So here's my iPhone 11 and just scrolling is super smooth and performance in general seems to be pretty good, whether that be the, Be the Geekbench scores or just using it overall. Many people are saying that it's much better with beta two compared to beta three. There was a slight stutter there when opening settings for the first time, but Overall, it seems to be much better in beta three. And that makes sense as we get closer and closer to a final release. Now, there is one issue that still remains too that has not gone away. And that's for people with iPhone 12 series devices where the black levels seem to be raised in the background. So quite a few people are still experiencing this where it might flicker and it's present in iOS 15 beta three, but not present in iOS 14.7. So the release candidate came out this week. So I would expect a final release probably this coming week. I'll talk more about that in a moment, but overall it's been extremely stable. iOS 14.7 release candidate people say is stable. It has good performance. It also stays nice and cool. Most people do not complain of the phone getting too hot or overheating. And while it will, will warm up if you're playing intensive games or maybe you have it charging, that's pretty normal for it to get a little bit warm. Most people are saying that it's much, much better in 14.7. Also, it has better battery life compared to iOS 14.6. Only one person in hundreds of comments said that it was bad on 14.7. Most people say that it's a huge improvement over 14.6 with iOS 14.7 release candidate, which should be the final version. So I would expect that as soon as this coming week, that seems to make the most sense. iOS 14.7 supports the new background or the new battery pack that goes on the back of the iPhone. And you need that for that product. And it comes out this coming week for most people that pre-ordered it. And so if you're getting that, I would expect it Monday or Tuesday with a final release. If they don't release it this coming week, I would be very surprised. So I think we'll see it on Monday for the most part. Now, as far as the green tint issue overall, Many people are saying that it's still a problem on iOS 14.7 and iOS 15 beta three. So it's still present. Apple has not said that they've fixed it. And I think we'll see it fixed pretty soon as they did with iPhone 11 pro 11 pro max. I think we'll see that pretty soon, but green tint is still a problem in the iPhone 12 series devices. Heating seems to be okay in 15 beta three, but some people are reporting that it is getting warm and that can affect battery life. It, if it is getting warm and processing a lot of things as well. So just keep that in mind. A few people are still having issues with Bluetooth. However, it's much, much better for me on 15.3 and 14.7. Like I mentioned before, now, as far as iPad OS 14.7 release candidate, it was super stable. It seems to not be an issue for anyone. They have fixed most of the issues as you would expect by this point. However, iPad OS 15 beta three has been super stable, no issues. And sorry about the cicadas in the background, but there's no issues and it seems to be running really great. I've had no app crashes. Although if you're having issues with apps, it's typically banking apps, but the overall redesign of Safari and the overall just feel of it is great. Although there's no universal control yet to use with a Mac, that's really what I'm waiting for. The one complaint I have is with battery life. And you'll see I had 40 minutes of screen on time, 49 minutes of screen off time. It was last charged 100% late last night and has barely any usage and we're down to 75% battery life. Now, because I'm outside, we are at very high brightness, but it should be a little bit better than it is. So I'm usually getting five or six hours of screen on time on the iPad, which isn't too great. So hopefully we'll see that improved in the near future. Now, as far as battery life on the iPhone 12 pro max that I'm using full time, we'll take a look at it with iOS 15 beta three. First, we'll go into battery. My battery health is 97%. And I know quite a few of you are concerned about your battery health going down with updates, but it's just recalculating every time that it does an update. So don't be too concerned about it. I generally don't look at this too much other than when doing a video. Now, as far as the last 10 days of battery life, you can see yesterday, this was my battery life, two hours and 58 minutes of screen on time, three hours and 23 minutes of screen off time. And I used about 40% of the battery. If we go back a day, 
three hours and 29 minutes, one hour and 32 minutes of screen off time. Usually about six to seven hours of battery life. However, I do think it's getting better as the beta has been out a little bit, things have finished processing in the background, I expect it to get much, much better in the future. So that's a good thing. Now, as far as battery life on iOS 14.7 release candidate, a viewer Cameron sent me in his screenshots of what his battery life was like on this on a 12 Pro Max. And as you can see, he had 12 hours and 53 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 31 minutes of screen off time. The odd thing is he used over 100% of his battery. So sometimes this shows up that way. If we take a look at a different day where he used about 50% of his battery, he got four hours and 10 minutes of screen on time and two hours and 16 minutes of screen off time. So most people are going to get the eight to 10, even 12 hours of screen on time using a 12 Pro Max or an 11 Pro, for example, any of those, or 11 Pro Max, any of those should be working as you would expect. So overall, these have been pretty good. Now, like I said already, I would expect iOS 14.7 this coming week, and as far as iOS 15 Beta 4, I would think that will be coming out probably around the 28th of July. Generally, we're on a two-week cycle, and then we'll go to a one-week cycle where they'll release them weekly up until the release, usually in mid to late September. So I would expect that as far as an overall release. Now, a couple other things to note is the iPhone 13 production is already underway, so those will be coming a little bit later with new M1X MacBooks as well, as well as new iMacs. So we're going to have all of these different products Apple hasn't released, along with some new AirPods probably by the end of the year, so we're just waiting for Apple to release those. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the YouTube community poll and some of the comments. So we'll go into YouTube. Now, at the time of this video, you can see there's 18,000 votes. So thank you to everyone who voted. And as you can see, there's a couple different options this time around, where 24% of you are using iOS 15 beta 3, 12% of you were waiting for the public beta, which came out the other day, 5% of you are using iOS 14.7 release candidate, 54% of you are on the public version of iOS 14.6 or older, and 5% of you are using maybe iOS 12 on an older device or Android. It seems pretty normal compared to what we have generally with beta updates and people running betas, but most people that are running betas are on iOS 15, which makes the most sense. Now let's take a look at some of the comments. Now at the time of this video, there's 215 comments. Let's take a look at some of these. Now I did get all of the different information such as statistics and what you had to say and all the different devices you were using based off this YouTube community poll comment section. So I've read every single one of these, but let's read five or 10 of, or so. Let's take a look at some of these here. Dominic McElroy says, I'm on iOS 15 developer beta three on an iPhone 12 Pro. Two issues really, like you mentioned on one of your previous videos, the screen flashes the odd time when exiting an app and in messages in a conversation with a person, when you click on their name at the top where you, you'd usually see photos, links and documents, these keep disappearing. Matt Robertson says, visual lookup doesn't seem to work on iOS 15 public beta three, possibly because I'm Australia or I'm in Australia, iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's more device dependent as far as I understand it. And it seems to take a while to process that information in photos and maybe show up properly. I really can only get landmarks to work, although some people are seeing flowers and maybe dogs and things like that working. Barbie says, I've been using iOS 15 developer beta three on my 6S plus working very smoothly, but the system data other is massive. And I really wouldn't worry about this. This is handled completely by the software and it's usually something I normally ignore and just let it handle. Unless I need that extra storage, I really wouldn't worry about it. Follow the John says, iPhone XS Max on 15 beta three, battery life is better than beta two, but not much better. The messaging app still freezes on a regular basis. Quad Rider Honda says, using iOS 14 RC on a 12 Pro Max and on iPad Pro 12.9 2020 with iPad OS 14.7. Battery is great and performance too. Love your videos, can't wait. Thank you. Daniel Mayer says, it's going very well for me, and hopefully I pronounced your last name properly. The battery on my iPhone 11 and Apple Watch is very good. Notify when leaving the Apple Watch is grayed out. Greetings from Austria iOS 15 beta three on my iPhone 11. It is much stable update and no more issues, but the only thing is battery life is worst. Matrix Roland says iOS 15 public beta three mostly fixed the data issues I was having over cellular. Beta two was driving me crazy. At least now I don't have to reboot the phone to get it working again. I do occasionally have to toggle airplane mode on and off. I still leave private relay off. I may try it later to see if it's working now. And for me so far, it's not working. I turn that off. Hopefully they'll fix it in the future. And so that's everything with iOS 15 beta three and iOS 14.7 release candidate. I'm looking forward to the final releases and maybe we'll see some more features 
features and changes before they're finally released with iOS 15. But I'm not really holding my breath for split screen or anything like that. But let me know what you think of this overall outside video, what you think of that. And also, if you like the mic, I tried to include a little bit more ambient sound this time instead of more of a studio sound. I'd love to hear what you think about it in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.